let's talk about everyone's favorite food and some tips on reusing your designs. So all joking aside, I think pizza is a food that so many people love. And maybe you're not one of those people, but there's a large majority of people in the world that love pizza. So <laughs> that's beside the point a little bit, but today I'm going to be talking about a pizza icon I recently made. If you're not familiar with this, I will be narrati narrating, narrating over <laughs> a screencast I recently made. And I will be talking about the process of making this icon and what went into it. I also, at the end, get into a few tips for repurposing a design you've made and some tips along the way for how you can keep things uh, where you can edit them and also in a proper format for exporting. So let's just dive into it. Okay, so at the beginning, I just lay down the framework for this pizza icon. I literally make uh, kind of a pizza <laughs> and then I create the inner circle, which is the crust thickness. And then I start to trim the shape and start making it into a pizza. This is a, a technique I use quite often where I kind of lay out a grid and then I start working with it and I start using the Pathfinder tools a lot. If you're not familiar with the Pathfinder tools, they're at the top right and there are a lot of different options you can use, as you can see there, to create your final piece. Now it's time to add some toppings. We'll put some pepperonis <laughs> all over the place. And uh, this part probably takes a little bit longer than it should have, but I'm very picky when it comes to setting objects inside of my icons. And so this, uh, even though this is at a little over 200% speed, it still seems like a long process. Um, just laying those out, no particular like method to it other than making sure they're in uh, good places and good sizes. So now I'm just trimming them again with the Pathfinder tool and we're about to get into the main part of this screencast, which is number one, make a copy of what you make. It's very important. Keep that. Uh, also create your icons. If you're doing outline icons, create them as objects with strokes applied and then expand those objects like I just did. And then you can combine them and you can go in and clean them up using some of the vector tools available to you in Illustrator. This is the part where I take color samples from actual pizza. As you can see here, I didn't finish cleaning up all of the pizza. That is just a portion of it that I cleaned up. And I wanted to do that because I wanted to make sure I didn't take too much time in this video cleaning up all the vector points. I'll do that later, but I'm going to use that copy again to reutilize this design and do some different things, which I think is a very interesting method. And it's a reason that I try to make copies of anything I create with strokes applied before I create something final that you can export and scale easily and just use as a normal vector object. So as you can see here, I'm creating a darker outline and then I'm filling it with color, which may be a style you've seen before where it's not just an outline icon, but it's outlined with colors inside of it. Or you could also very easily with this method, create a flat color icon where, you know, there's none of that outline applied. So that was it for the pizza icon. I hope that you enjoyed watching that screencast and seeing how that was done. It's very helpful to know that you can repurpose these things. Often we get stuck in this mindset of creating on a single path and that that path has to be what we follow. And it's not always the path you follow. Sometimes you may need to adjust things. You may need to change things. And depending on the situation, maybe one variant that I showed here is more appropriate than the other. And I will often actually, you know, I made that copy during the video of the outlines and so that I could reuse those later. Sometimes I'll actually make an entire file dedicated to saving those and finish the work elsewhere. So I have essentially a master file I can refer to, change the thickness or the corner rounding or the color and all that kind of stuff. Or I can just go to the other file, which is like the vector file where I've got everything complete 
and I can export from there. I could send that to someone and they could use it as a vector object. It's very flexible, but I still have my master file. I can always refer to and repurpose. Again, that's not every time. It's depending on how important the file is and how much, how likely it is I'll repurpose it or reuse it. In this case, I'm using that pizza icon as one of the icons you'll see at the end of this video in the background. Uh, I'm kind of adding some icons to my branding and trying to fix things a little bit with my visual identity. So that's one of the things I've changed. That's at the end of the video and I'll be using it elsewhere. So it's handy to have that master file and have copies and know how it can be changed and how it can be adjusted to look different ways. Of course, I didn't color it like pizza like I did in this video. I just had a lot of fun sampling pizza colors and <laughs> trying to use those in the icons. So hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Thank you.